all secure in our region. Let me introduce uh, my distinguished panelists who represent our region. Uh, Jan Marian, Deputy Minister, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Czechia. Mm -hmm. Dimitrios Nalakis, Professor, the World Maritime University, Greece. Filip Ludwin, Vice Rector for Education Collegium Intermarium Poland. <clears throat> Gladen Papin, President Hungarian Institute for International Affairs Hungary. <clears throat> Aldis Alster, it's correct. Okay, thank you. Researcher Latvian Academy of Sciences, Latvia. Denis Vinsky, Vinsky, sorry, Polish Root, from Ukraine, head of Baltic Bureau and the Trisys Initiative Center for Global Studies Strategy 2001 Century Ukraine. <clears throat> Let me start with a few words about the Trisys Initiative and we will speak English, Polish, it depends on the site in which languages is more suitable and uh, more comfortable for, for them. So, firstly, a uh, few words about the Trisys region. Uh, and uh, what I notice, even if we are repeating many, many times about the Trisys region, it is never uh, enough to repeat what is the Trisys region and what we together as a Trisys region can achieve. On the slide, as you can see on the screen, there is a few information about the Trisys region. Our total uh, GDP, the fastest growing region, 15% of GDP of the total uh, European Union, 25% of population, 30% of territory, and including uh, uh, our Greece new members, it is over 120 million population. It is more than or even had the same uh, figures like in Japan. And let me start with uh, some question to my distinguished panelists about their view on this <coughs> Trisys initiative and what, what we can do together. Let me start with my question to Minister Jan Marian. Uh, Czech is the, in the heart of the Trisys region. What is your view on our cooperation and integration and how the Czechia can play the important role to build and develop the most important corridor for develop our business and to build the other opportunities? Okay, thank you, thank you very much for the invitation. I will speak English. I will start uh, and I'm privileged to be here for the first time. This is really impressive. We just had uh, GlobSec in Prague, which is also very specific and a huge conference, but I must say that this one, in terms of participants, it's even more impressive, I have to say. Uh, I'll start with the final point. I think uh, for Czechia, the key, key point is to do the homeworks with or without precis, so that we do the homeworks on infrastructure. We, of course, look at Poland. We feel that we have lost some time here in terms of uh, railways and other connections, so this is one of the priorities for this government also for the next year. So the transport projects will benefit mostly from the budget uh, budget increase. And I think the three Cs as a concept and region uh, fits well into this. So this is one of the key formats where we see that we like connection from the south to the north. So, so we are more than happy to operate with this, within this light, light structure. And of course, uh, the key point is here to, to get uh, more financing also from the, from the EU. And what we also like about Reese's is the geopolitical role, uh, given the composition, including uh, Moldova and Ukraine. So uh, that's for the start. Thanks. Thank you very much. Maybe I ask to elaborate more from a Greece perspective as a new member, in terms of business and also in terms of security. And right now we can use even not the Reese's, but maybe five, six, I think so. 
Well, thank you for the question. Let me also thank the organizers for their kind invitation and also the minister for uh, mentioning the magic word infrastructure. Uh, you are indeed correct when you are saying that maybe the name now needs some adaptation. It is the power of geography. It used to be Greece's. Greece is bringing the supervision or control or access, depending which approach you want to adopt, of the Ionian Sea, which is the gateway to the Adriatic, the Aegean Sea, and of course, access to the Mediterranean, so there are vast opportunities in terms of maritime transport. Having that said, I strongly agree with the statement previously heard. There is a necessity for hinterland connections to create a port or to boost the business of the port is relatively easy. The difficult task is to match the correct business model with all the infrastructure behind the support of the port. So we should look now immediately a new generation of railway, especially in Greece. The railway system is not in a good condition and I think that one of the priorities of the government is to upgrade this. And the next step will be integration because we need connections from the north to the south. Previously, the emphasis was in road transport. I am sure that the vast majority of the audience here knows the European Highways Initiative. So now I think it is the time, along with our decarbonization and changing our energy model, stay away from road traffic and shift to rail and connect everything together and utilize our ports to support the movement of passengers and goods in the right direction. That would be from the time being, and I'm happy to expand further down the line. Thank you very much. Let me ask the next question to Philip Ludwin, the director, your point of view and maybe some historical context also of the Trisis region and the C2C. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for your question and thank you very much for the invitation. That's a great honor to, to be here, not only for me, but for the whole institution I'm representing here. So, and as for your question, my point, um, I could summarize my point uh, on the Free Seas Initiative as a very beginning, very developing project, still, in my opinion. So, uh, everything <coughs> what uh, has been done uh, within the framework of the Free Seas Initiative is extremely impressive. And congratulations for everyone who, who, who contributed to that concept, to that, uh, to that idea. But I see many difficulties uh, we are facing, especially nowadays, uh, if we want to continue that fascinating project. And in my opinion, the most important challenge, the biggest problem we have now is a lack of developed legal framework of the Free Seas Initiative. So, um, to put it simply, Free Seas Initiative is only a political action, uh, impressive political action, but without, unfortunately, without any legal, uh, legal framework. FRISIS initiative is not uh, a classical international organization gathering, gathering some, some states and, and so on. And, but the main problem is much more bigger because in our region, in fact, there is no a real international organization. So even Visegrad Group, that's another example <laughs> of a political agreement a series of political agreements, very important political declarations and so on. But Visegrad Group, after, um, after 20 years of, uh, of its existence, it's, it's not an international organization in the meaning, in the meaning of, uh, in, in, the, in the legal meaning. So that's, that's the main problem, in my opinion. So, uh, of course, I can develop my, my, uh, my point of view later during our discussion, but firstly, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to uh, emphasize 
that lack, that lack of legal framework or the initiative and the need, a very important need of creating something new, something new in a very, in, in a strict uh, in a strict legal sense. Because in my opinion, without it, without it, the free seas uh, will be in danger very soon. Thank you for your point of view. And uh, the minister, you wanted to add something? Thank you so much. If I may skip, uh, jump in before the other speakers. The, the Czech diplomacy in this regard has been always in favor of light structures. Uh, for us, the key legal framework is, of course, the international law, the EU and NATO. Uh, even the Visegrad Fund, uh, the Visegrad Four, which is very important historically, has the only fixed structure, which is the Visegrad Fund. Uh, so, so for us, I think this level of cooperation uh, is, is, is the best since it doesn't create new conditions and new legal bases, which also, I mean, middle-sized European diplomacy would have to tackle. And uh, uh, the same goes, for instance, for our new framework for angles with three other EU member states from different angles of the EU. So I would, I would be a bit cautious as to new legal commitments because we believe the light structures are the best in this regard. So uh, let me ask the, another question to the other <laughs> panelists who doesn't, doesn't uh, right now uh, talk anything. And Mr. Gladden Papin, uh, if you can share with us what is the view of Hungary on the TRISIS initiative? You are the, the members almost from the scratch, and you are the also uh, active uh, in the TRISIS fund. So, what is the next steps uh, uh, for Hungary to be more involved in the TRISIS initiative? Well, I think, <clears throat> first of all, thank you so much for convening this uh, very interesting panel. And uh, my perspective is informed by having been born and grown up in the, in the United States as well before uh, coming to Hungary a, a few years ago. And uh, so I want to contribute something from an American and, uh, and a Hungarian perspective as well. Uh, and it seems today that if we zoom out a little bit and consider the, the macro perspective in the world, um, that the economic strength of nations and regions is what is driving uh, their overall geopolitical weight. Um, and, in the, and in the early days, it seemed to me that the, that the Three Seas Initiative was clearly oriented around building up the overall economic capacity of the region and, and carefully highlighting the other aspects that bring it together as well. And given that the region had been uh, so divided for all the reasons that we could, we could discuss, there's a huge effort that can be made in terms of the types of infrastructure that we've discussed in order to overcome that. Um, and that also led to the initial commitment of the Trump administration previously to a, a significant investment in the region. Um, but it seems to me that the, that the focus of the, of the international funding, especially from the, from the U.S., changed significantly with the beginning of the war. It changed significantly toward a military outlays. Um, and so we should at least, whether, whatever we think about that, we should recognize that uh, a lot of the streams of money and investing and financing necessarily shifted uh, due, to, due to the nature of the war. Um, and that has intruded upon the, 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 the Three Seas Initiative discussion, another perspective. Um, and so I think in general, you know, the, the Hungarian foreign policy stance uh, in recent years has been trying to chart uh, a path in favor of maximal uh, connectivity through as many different flexible um, structures as are available to it. Um, of which the Three Seas Initiative has been an extremely important one. Uh, and of course, the Hungarian position has highlighted, uh, although it's of course highly debated, uh, the urgent need for peace in the region, without which the, the, the nature of the, in, the overall uh, nature of investing and spending in the region will have different characteristics. Um, so I think we can all hope that, um, that by whatever course, uh, we get back to a, a position where most of the um, financing that goes into big ticket projects of the, of the kind that the Three Seas Initiative is uh, will ultimately contribute to the, the economic weight of the region. 
Thank you very much for, for your point of view. And yes, let's elaborate uh, a little bit more uh, about the Trisis region from the Latvia perspective. And uh, Mr. Aldis Alster, if you may to share with us the, your perspective about this international initiative, especially you are the one of the closest neighbors with Russia. Well, well thank you. Um, uh, <laughs> I have to make a long story short one. Um, you know, Latvia is one of the smallest members in this project. Uh, Estonia is even smaller, but and, uh, still. Um, and we are still at the economy is in a state of um, rethinking its future. We have lost our mojo of development uh, because of um, 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 because of uh, what happened in Russia. Uh, because from the 1990s, uh, we wanted to act as a bridge between between Russia and former Soviet countries uh, with the West. Uh, we developed our banking sector, which uh, worked for for. Uh, uh, for for uh, those who had money in the east, uh, we uh, presented ourselves as as uh, Switzerland, which is closer than Switzerland uh, geographically. Uh, then we also developed our transport networks uh, to transport Russian gas, oil, uh, and, and goods in those directions. But all this is gone now, and therefore we have it has been reflected in our um, lack of development uh, since um, uh, 2000. Um, 2010, I would say, um, and yes, and, and this uh, three C's initiative provides a new uh, potential uh, for our development, uh, but uh, we are still uh, looking how to benefit from it. Uh, politically, we are very committed. Uh, there's been hesitation at the beginning, but now uh, we understand uh, fully the geopolitical importance of this project, and we will uh, remain part of this project, uh, whatever is the development. Economically, the, the, the devil is in detail. And so when we look at initiatives which have been uh, financed by the uh, 3Cs Investment Fund, unfortunately, that has not been able to attract uh, any at this moment because uh, the problem is the scale. Uh, we are, we are, our economy is much smaller than, than uh, the Polish one, and therefore our projects do not qualify at this moment uh, for, uh, we, we cannot fulfill the criteria for, for uh, attracting finance. Uh, that's one thing. Other thing is the, the nature of this finance. Uh, loans, um, which are issued by the, the investment fund, uh, is less favor uh, beneficial uh, or less favorable than, than in grants we see from European uh, funds. And um, currently, um, the, the project, for example, we would like to be part of the finance by uh, uh, Three Seas Initiative. This is the logistical center in Salzburg, which would connect the railway, uh, which is, would be a, a, the crossing uh, uh, for the Red Baltica and, and uh, the, the, uh, the traditional uh, west-east uh, uh, um, railway um, um, lines. Uh, well, it is, um, there's been some issues still, and we you know, we're looking to the second um, generation of this fund, which probably would have more elasticity in built for such smaller scale projects. But at the moment, uh, it is still, uh, we, we have been able to benefit a little from, from, from this uh, initiative. And also financially and economically, when we look at cooperation, uh, um, two thirds of our of trade uh, for Latvia uh, and investment in exchanges come from our neighboring countries, from Lithuania and Latvia, and, and only one third from the rest of uh, three Cs uh, uh, countries. Um, this is partially the um, the, the um, phenomenon uh, which we observed in Baltics after uh, our accession to the EU. We quickly became the largest trade investment partners to each other. So in that sense, Baltic market uh, became a substructure of, of EU's internal market. A phenomena which could not be seen in in, uh, in Visegrad countries. In Visegrad, you did not become partners to each other. You still uh, continue to trade a lot with Germany, and Germany was your main partner, and this continues to be. So, in that sense, we in Baltics we progressed um, uh, in sub-regional integration faster than, than you did, but uh, uh, we still are too far from from you, and we still need to look for uh, for. Uh, in, more cooperation projects economically 
from our region uh, towards your regions. Maybe through this uh, three seeds initiative, it will, it will become a reality. Uh, we will create market through these uh, infrastructure projects and uh, other um, uh, projects developed within this, this city three seeds initiative. But it's still, um, uh, it's only a promise. No, it's not uh, yet to be materialized. Thank you. And yes, and there's a last aspect of uh, we had an exchange with you uh, yesterday, our emails. I also had concern about the institutional structure of the 3 seed initiative. At the moment, the institutionalization is too vague, I would say, because institutions provide, bureaucracy is good in the sense it provides past dependency and continuity in case there is political uh, crisis within a uh, system. And therefore, I would say, as political scientists, that we need to uh, increase the density of institutions within this initiative. We can, of course, outsource part of it to European Commission and other international bodies which exist today, like like uh, investment bank, uh, investment bank, or uh, bank of reconstruction. But 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 we need this bureaucracy if we want to look at this uh, initiative in long term. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it is something what I can share with you, but maybe later on, and our experience as a whole region with EIB, EBRD, EU Commission, and so on. But let's give the voice to our neighbors and the associated partner and associated state, Ukraine. And Ukraine, it won't be possible to support effectively uh, Ukraine without the Tricis region and the Romania and Poland plays the important role and uh, the most important role uh, so as an associated uh, country how you feel this initiative what kind of role we can play as an uh, institution international uh, initiative for Ukraine Thank you. Wspaniałe wydarzenie. I chciałbym od razu przypomnieć 22 rok, kiedy prawie cała logistyka paliwowa 100% rafinerii Ukrainy były zniszczone przez rosyjskie wojska. A kryzys paliwowy oczywiście tak samo kryzys paliwowy w Ukrainie, tak samo w naszym sąsiadzie. I to, jak szybko i skutecznie ten system logistyczny on był przystosowany do tych realiów bardzo ciężki. Naprawdę to był bardzo poważny problem i ze względu logistyki biznesu międzypaństwowych problemów i tak dalej, ale jak skutecznie i szybko to wszystko było rozwiązane. Dzięki temu a, wojsko ukraińskie miało możliwość dać odpór. I jeżeli by nie było takiego mocnego wsparcia, może być dzisiaj już wojsko rosyjskie stojałoby oprócz granic Polski i innych krajów i decyzji do może. Dlatego ten Ja bym nie powiedział, że to już projekt, to jest już strategiczne narzędzie. Koncepcja inicjatywy Trójmorza to już narzędzie, jakie zajmuje takie bardzo poważne miejsce w architekturze bezpieczeństwa w wschodniej flanki NATO. I dlatego mamy bardzo dużo roboty, ale wzmacnianie tego w, w tej współpracy to jest strategiczne jak w sensie bezpieczeństwa, tak i w przyszłości dla odbudowy Ukrainy i wzmacnianie energetycznej, energetycznego bezpieczeństwa wszystkich państw. Powiedzieć jeszcze ta koncepcja Trójmorza, ona otwiera bardzo duże możliwości właśnie w energetyce. A można przypomnieć sobie ten projekt Cermatia. Teraz pod względem tych problemów, jakie powiązane z wojną, 
trzeba było je było trochę przyrobić w sensie bezpieczeństwa, zabezpieczyć, ale ten projekt ja myślę, że ma bardzo wielką przyszłość. W czasach dzisiejszych dla wsparcia wojska ukraińskiego, dla organizacji logistyki paliwowej, a później w mirnym czasie to jest bardzo ważny projekt dla bezpieczeństwa paliwowego dwóch naszych krajów. Thank you very much. We heard about the uh, security, <coughs> security in the broader context, not only uh, the energy. It is uh, military security, food security, and the others. Uh, we had the opportunity to talk shortly with uh, Dimitrios Dalakis, Dalatkis uh, to show you the more information about the energy security, how it is important, and how these corridors and the axis north-south are uh, very important. I know that you have uh, the short presentation also about this, but let, um, uh, before we start the presentation, let me give you the context of the figures that we should spend 650 billion euro up to 2030 just to have the equal infrastructure comparing to the western part of the European Union. I think only about the European Union. Since 2018 to 2022, our government spent over 80 billion euro just to catch up with this infrastructure gaps that we have. But it's not enough, as you see. We have to make a huge effort. And why it is important, I believe that this presentation can show you and give you more context how and why we should develop these corridors and the infrastructure, especially the energy infrastructure. May I ask for the presentation? Thank you. Before I dive into the presentation, I cannot resist my Greek temptation of dominating the discussion. I strongly support the minister when he said we are in favor of light structures. Since I'm currently working in the UN system, Whenever we try negotiations about formal obligations and privileges, the situation gets messy and innovation is immediately gone. And to combine uh, the input from uh, our friend from Hungary, infrastructure can help to promote peace, but if there is a need to go into an armed conflict, it can also help to mobilize the resources. And I'll stop the discussion there. If it is okay with the moderator, I will now dive into the presentation. <coughs> Let me start. Can everybody hear me? <laughs> After 26 years of military service, my voice is light, loud enough. There is a microphone. There is a microphone. Yes. Or I'm getting cold and I need a microphone. So, history, history, history. Whenever I see the 3 c initiative, comes from my high school days, the term central powers. I don't know, I guess we are in the same age, so we are sharing the same experience. So if we look back into history, we can understand exactly where we stand in reality. What we will try to do is to guess about the future. Like I said before, I am currently employed by the UN, so quick disclaimer, what you will hear is my appreciation and do not express any official views. This is my beautiful building. I am based in Malmo, so I bring experience from two regions, one from Scandinavia and one from Greece. So, at the very beginning I said Greece is bringing along control of the seas. And even the title, Three Seas Initiative, is explaining why maritime transport is important. However, the Three Seas Initiative in reality is a land bridge. It is the opportunity to connect Europe from the north to the south or the south to the north, depending where your country is. Geopolitics. 
I guess you have all seen the big fat Greek wedding, the guy that says everything is Greek. He's 90% right. So geopolitics is a Greek word and you are using the power of geography to understand what will happen in the future. So here is my brain teaser. Are we heading towards peace? I'm challenging my colleague from Hungary. Obviously not. And as Cicero used to say, if you want peace, you prepare for war. All the UN system, even the usage of the word war is forbidden. Is the world united today? No, it is not. Clearly, many different views around the world. And as there are efforts in Europe to unite, there are also other efforts to unite differently. So in reality, it looks like the three C's initiatives will be the new border. And this is why I will strongly advocate a permanent secretariat with a grand strategy document selecting a year of whatever and a political commitment to back <coughs> those grand strategy documents. Going into energy, unfortunately because of my background, it is like a lecture. I guess you all know this. We like renewable and we try to stay away from non-renewable or fossil fuels and the problem of carbon. When we're talking about energy, three big components, electricity, heating, and transport. In electricity, we're doing good, but when we add heating and transport, we are doing extremely bad. And this is why infrastructure, interconnection, producing energy somewhere else and transferring it in a different country, might contribute to the world, might improve the world situation. You all know this. I repeatedly say this in my classes. Especially now that we have kind of lost the cheap energy resources coming from the east, we need to restructure our system, most likely in a north to south or south north direction. Are we having a deterrent availability of energy sources at an affordable price today? No, we don't. And this is why we had inflation. And those who believe that the inflation problem is solved, let me tell you it is not solved. Some tools on how to achieve energy security. So it's not only investment in infrastructure, but for example, changing consumer habits energy efficiency and all that stuff and I think I'm coming to an end yes it's going to be hybrid and this is to put some more fuel into the discussion we need to decide urgently if this is if what is happening today in Ukraine is going to be resolved soon or it will take a lot of, a lot of time because the responses are going to be totally different and with that, I hope I have created enough room for further discussions. And apologies to the moderator for utilizing the time. Thank you very much. I think it is a good inspiration for the broader discussion about the business and security uh, opportunities that we have. So, dear minister, the role of our governments, uh, how to build this uh, integration and cooperation to create, the, from the one hand, the security, from the other hand, the business opportunity. And without the energy and the energy solutions, it will be very difficult to compete with the others. Well, uh, hard to answer. Before, before I start, maybe I, I, I'll jump or follow on the last point you, you've made. I think we need to be ready for long-term situation. 
I mean, Russian behavior is not about to change in one or two years, and uh, my country believes we need to be ready for containment of Russia for next years or decades. And this will be the reality unless something happens. The, the change is in the hands of Ukrainians, basically. They can change the situation on the ground and have influence on Russia. So, so, so what we see here in terms of energy security, we need to clear the table, which we did in Czechia, basically, in most of the areas. And this is the only way forward. We believe there can be no business as usual with Russia in the years and decades to come. And on your, on your general questions, I think the governments have to work hand in hand with the businesses. We have election cycles, which is difficult. Uh, we have election cycles also on the other side of the Atlantic. So I can only say, uh, and I believe, and I believe this would apply to Czechia, that you have to have some basic foreign policy priorities that wouldn't change with any with, with each government. I hope it will happen in my country next year. Thank you very much. Mr. Philip Ludwin, we talk about uh, some organization who can support this initiative, uh, but from the other side, uh, what we, even without this specific organization, how we as a business, as a government, as an institution can develop this initiative? Because on the corridor, on the axis north-south, it is a huge opportunity. Because after the communist time, we are looking on the other west, and the West, it was our leader. We were fan of uh, how we want to be the, the, the Western countries. We still are in the second row, to be honest, compared to the Western part of Europe. But only the common effort can lead us in the step away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I think, uh, and maybe that is another that is the second version of my 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 first uh, my first um, point of view presented here because uh, you know i i was talking about uh, a need of a new international organization in the in the intermarium region but we can we can reformulate that point of view and maybe that would be more convincing for for, for you and uh, we can use uh, existing international organizations or political international agreement in our region to realize uh, the free seas initiative goals why not we can uh, we can engage in uh, in a very more active and more developed way uh, we can engage for instance Visegrad group for instance um, the Central European Initiative. Another, and in fact, the Central European Initiative was the first, um, first political and international action in the region. You know, beginning in the uh, in the late uh, at, uh, in the beginning of uh, 1990s. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and uh, unfortunately, currently the the initiative, Central European Initiative, is almost dead. Fortunately, and I can give you uh, one interesting example. A few months ago, I was in Prague at, at the conference, and um, at the conference there were some representatives of Austria, and uh, and we were talking about about the, the Central European Initiative, and uh, I uh, I talked that that uh, Austria left. The, the initiative a few years ago, but I don't remember. I didn't remember the date when Austria did that. And uh, and I asked uh, our Austrian friends, and and uh, I, I told I told please remember me the date when Austria left the initiative and so on. And they they um, they looked at me and they uh, even didn't know that Austria was a member of the initiative in the past. So for them, for these Austrian experts, experts in politics, um, so so they, they they weren't commoners. So but but they were they were experts, and, and unfortunately they didn't know about about the membership of Austria, Austrian membership in the in the Central European Initiative. So that is a very good example that if we uh, if, if if so many people. Um, 
even even uh, if so many people didn't uh, did know nothing about 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 our our uh, our common success uh, in our very modern history. So how we could uh, in that situation how we could develop the free seeds. So so maybe maybe we should take uh, we should take into account another another forms of international cooperation. So I've mentioned uh, Visegrad Group. I've mentioned Central European uh, Initiative. Another example might be might be uh, the Baltic Assembly. So maybe maybe our our friend from from Latvia could uh, could could, uh, could uh, say something more about 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 uh, um, his experience. So uh, another example is uh, the the Council of the Baltic States. Mm, the cooperation, you know. Uh, the cooperation between the Free Seas Initiative and the Baltic Council uh, might be very fruitful. Another example, of course, I know that is a very specific example, that will be a very specific example, because I mean the Nordic Council. But, you know, if we, if we take a look on the map and if we, um, that, that uh, we will be able to see that Nordic Council, you know, are, might, be, might be another part of the Free Seas, why not? Why not? I think that these countries might might wait for our proposals. Why not? Thank you very much. Uh, I know that the uh, minister wanted to add something, but if you allow me to ask uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Gladden uh, Papin uh, about uh, your um, some thoughts uh, based on this uh, discussion which we uh, provide right now. Uh, and then at the end, I, I would like to ask you the, the one question to the all of you, and then you can uh, share the other topics as well. So please, Mr. Gordon. Well, I have a lot of thoughts now <clears throat> uh, in reaction to the very, very stimulating presentations and considerations that have been that have been put forward. Um, but I'll I'll try to keep to just a, a couple of brief comments. Um, first of all, for some of the reasons that have just been mentioned, I'm a little bit skeptical um, that the Three Seas Initiative countries could become a geopolitical block of the, of the form that was conjured in, uh, in, in our colleagues' presentation, although it's, it's, a, it's an interesting question and it would take a long time to discuss. Um, but it seems to me that the um, that the that the war has changed things and has brought out a slightly uh, different perspective from many of the participants. Obviously, it's no secret that I'm talking about Hungary here as well. Um, but um, I, I I guess my overall standpoint would be that, um, as I said at the beginning, since it's ultimately economic strength which underlies uh, the ability of countries or regions to come together and, and have a, a geopolitical identity or impact. Of course, there are a lot of other um, uh, elements that have to be resolved as well. Um, I, I, I think the, the possibility that the Three Seas Initiative countries would emerge as a, as a shared, uh, offering a shared geopolitical mindset is still pretty far in the future. Um, I, th I think there are a lot of reasons that have um, come about in, in the last couple of years that might make people very enthusiastic that that could occur or should occur since block formation has come back into the um, that back into this region in a, in a heavy way it's perhaps natural to respond to that by expecting that a clear geopolitical mindset could emerge among these countries but I, I, I don't see it maybe in maybe in some small sub blocks um, also, the economic competitiveness of the region has been heavily injured by the war as well. That's true now not even of Central and Eastern Europe, but of Western Europe as well. So because of the uh, changed environment around access to cheap energy, there's been a significant amount of decline in industrial activity even in uh, Western, Western Europe and Western Central Europe, something like that. Um, so from the Hungarian perspective, east-west connectivity is still important, and of course it's not going to have the same uh, characteristic that it did before the war, but um, Hungary has been an enthusiastic um, advocate for and, and an 
analyst of and participant in aspects of the middle corridor as well. I just wanted to plug one brief initiative of the Hungarian Institute of International Affairs, um, which some of my colleagues here were involved in, which is an, uh, an effort to bring together discussions about the middle corridor with discussions of the Three Seas Initiative. We had a little conference on that at the beginning of this year, um, and if anyone is interested in pursuing that topic, we'll probably have something more on it in the future. Um, so those were my two semi-related comments, and happy to come back in later. I fully agree. We need the east-west, but we need the north-south as well. The east-west are very, very developed uh, corridors. Right now, we have to start to develop uh, also the corridors on the north-south axis to build the so-called net to help us to develop uh, our business and our countries. Uh, Mr. Audis Oster, uh, if you can add from your point of view, uh, because as a small country, so with this uh, north-south corridor, uh, Latvia, it is something what you need definitely from the energy point of view, from the business point of view, and the connectivity that uh, built from the logistic point of view, the additional opportunity for, for your country. So if you can elaborate more based on this discussion. Uh, yes, indeed. Um, and in that sense, uh, the poor in Ukraine um, uh, acted as, as, as a blessing in disguise. Uh, it uh, forced our princes business ranks uh, to reorient uh, their, their um, business thinking from, from finally from Russia towards towards West and also uh, other region, European regions. And in that sense, Rebotica, which is the largest project uh, from the perspective of uh, South-North connectivity, is of high importance. It would provide, a, 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 I would say, a quick, a large-scale connectivity with, with uh, Origin and will connect with, with South. Um, um, and this has military importance. Um, and, and of course, we have undertaken other projects uh, to provide also in, 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 in the electricity sector and, and, and in the gas supply. Uh, we uh, built interconnectors with Sweden, with Poland, with Finland, so that, uh, we are, that we are, the risks are, are better balanced uh, in terms of, of supply security. But um, yes, as I said, um, the Nam Club, we are struggling now. Uh, we, uh, the growth uh, rates are very low. Uh, we still haven't found our, our way in this, in this new world because of uh, closure of Russian border. We have turned into the periphery of Europe. And the thing is, the question is how to get out of this uh, uh, periphery. But um, uh, the interesting, uh, it's, 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 interestingly enough, also Germany is struggling and Germany will not recover quickly. It will also take decades. And therefore, the whole European development is under question. And maybe this three seas initiative would, um, would provide a new, new uh, module for, for European development. But again, uh, as you said yourself, we need 600 billion. Uh, this is a huge amount. And we have to create this money somehow. And without political um, uh, apparatus, uh, helping us to create this money, it will not work. Uh, with the political statements of, of state presidents, if we will not deliver six billion. We need more. We need structures, uh, structures which work on daily basis on projects uh, and and the coordination of efforts. Uh, the heterogeneity is huge. We are very different from our Greek colleagues, uh, Greek uh, partners, um, and we need to learn how to cooperate. Because naturally, instinctively, we all look towards Germany, but we have to change this. And we need also cultural programs to support our economic efforts, uh, cultural exchange between students. Uh, we need to learn our cultures, our languages. Uh, this will all then support and will bring this money, this 600 billion. Without these uh, uh, other structures, it won't work economically. Um, right, so we have a huge task ahead of us. As, and from the small countries, of course, there's that um, uh, Baltics. We have, uh, and this also answered to your question about the Baltic Council. Um, uh, we have done quite a lot, as I said. We have uh, integrated ourselves much faster than your regions uh, did, uh, but it's not enough. 
we are still not too fragmented from the perspective of a multinational uh, which would bring uh, the money back from China. We need uh, in Baltics uh, to work uh, more uh, to integrate, to become a single entity uh, from the perspective of multinational. So that is one registration, one taxation system, uh, and, and, and uh, there is no arbitrary um, um, law um, um, conflicts. So we, this program is still to be completed in Baltics. Uh, I'm not talking here about, about uh, this whole region, of uh, the three seas region. So there is a huge task ahead of us. I fully agree. And let's hear the voice from Ukraine and how Ukraine can count our region. This very difficult situation, and especially when we are talking about money, Ukraine has no money right now. Oczywiście w stanie wojny Ukraina nie ma <coughs> żadnych pieniędzy dla realizacji takich dużych projektów, ale e, e, trzeba powiedzieć, że Ukraina ma duże doświadczenie w różnych e, e, branżach energetycznych, na przykład e, w energetyce jądrowej. I, e, <coughs> Wiemy, że Polska teraz planuje pobudować u siebie elektrownię jądrową i to byłoby takim bardzo dobrym projektem organizacja jakiegoś wspólnego centrum, jaki by mógłby rozwijać się wspólnie z Stanami Zjednoczonymi i oczywiście mógłby nie tylko zajmować się adaptacją systemy energetyczne Ukrainy, łączenie tych systemów z Polską, dlatego, żeby zrobić najwięcej elastycznymi nasze systemy, odpornymi na różne rodzaje wyzwania, ale i właśnie jak rozwój nauki, inżynierii i tak dalej. Bo te typy reaktorów, jakie korzystamy w Ukrainie, oni tak samo mają chłodzenie wodą jak jest ten chaos. I dlatego to byłby do, dobry kierunek. I oczywiście, że takich e, przykładów bardzo dużo. W tym trzeba szukać e, wspólne kierunki. Oczywiście e, każ, każdy kraj e, pod względem pieniędzy on może w różnym rodzaju brać udział w tych projektach. Ale współpraca jest bardzo ważna. Bardzo ważna, bo rozwija właśnie, jak koledzy mówili, sieć. Ta sieć energetyczna, ona jest podstawą dla naszej odporności na różne agresywne, wiemy tak, wyzwania. Wszystko. Thank you, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, the Trisys Initiative 120 million population, common effort to fill in the gaps, uh, especially in infrastructure. Uh, 650 billion euro that we have to spend up to 2030 to fill in only the gaps and to create the infrastructure, which will be the same quality as we already the number of countries has in the western part of uh, Europe. Uh, you mentioned many times about the EU Commission, you mentioned about the uh, EIB, EBRD and the other uh, organization. I spent 100 hours to talk with EIB, with e EBRD, EU Commission, why they don't support us. Why they don't support us, this is the main question, and how we can make the common effort, our governments, our institutions, to push them a little bit, because last my, my uh, discussion with EIB, as a pres former president of uh, Polish Development Bank UGK, and I asked them, what is the plan for the investment in the entire European Union, and who are the proud members of the European Union? They thinking about uh, how to invest in Caribbean and the northern part of Africa, and how about us? So, from your perspective, one sentence as I summarize what is the threats and what is the opportunity 
for this initiative and what we can do together as a short sentence from your side. What is the challenge and what is the really opportunity for this initiative? Because nobody has any doubts this is strategic importance initiative. Let's start with Ukraine. Nawieś nie wiem od czego zacząć. <laughs> ja myślę, że kwestia tego jest bardzo trudna, żeby powiedzieć to tak jednym słowem, ale naprawdę ten projekt inicjatywę Trójmorza w kontekście tych wyzwań, jakie teraz widzę w Ukrainie, ona jest... Ona potrzebuje rozwoju i potrzebuje rozwoju na różnych poziomach i to trudno opisać jakimś jednym słowem, ale my już bardzo dobrze widzimy wyniki. Już odrzucili my w Ukrainie tą agresję rosyjską, postanowili wojska e, i to e, e, ma pod sobą właśnie wsparcie krajów Trójmorza, naszych, naszych sąsiadów. To nie można powiedzieć, że to jest wyniki jakoś jednej strony, to właśnie jest współpraca, tylko w tym kierunku. Ok, so cooperation, collaboration is most important. Okay, so firstly, uh, thank you very much for your remark, um, summarizing your experience, uh, your experience with with another international bodies. Uh, that's a very sad story. That's a very sad remark, in fact. But I'm fully aware of that, and that's why, and that's why I um, I uh, I see the need of new legal international organization in our region. That's why we have to have our own international bodies, because another institutions don't understand us. So, um, so, 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 so thank you very much once, once again. That's a great contribution to my my opinions and my my short speech and uh, you are you uh, you are uh, asking about the, the the biggest challenge and the biggest opportunity right so the biggest challenge is uh, is a lack of legal framework and the biggest opportunity is to have a legal framework so thank, thank, thank you. you very much thank you very much mr minister thank you about the first many thanks for this opportunity it's great to see so many people interested in this region and in this cooperation. Uh, I would say that, uh, I mean, I feel EU, we are the EU, so we are the EU institutions. Sometimes we might not, not like it, uh, we might like it more or less. We would like to see, for instance, more checks in the institutions. Uh, sometimes we feel Poland can be more active in this regard, it's more visible, it's bigger, of course. At the same time, it's us. I don't, I, I don't feel we need a new format or new legal framework because we have to use what we have, which is European Council, European Commission, European Parliament, and it's our role to be active. And I would have two positive points, basically. Uh, first, as we see the center of gravity and thinking in, in Europe has shifted towards Central Europe. Uh, uh, what used to be hawkish approach from labeled like, like Pol Polish hawkish approach, Lithuanian, is the new mainstream. So we feel that our positions are much are heard much more, and this I think will be reinforced also by uh, Kaya Kalas as the new high rep. And uh, I would be also positive, unlike uh, the point made by the Hungarian colleague, on the economic impact. Uh, like it or not, but the Russian aggression unfortunately has also positive economic impact. It has brought uh, Euro migrants from Ukraine in Czechia. We have half a million. They contribute to the economy and budget strongly. And we have many bilateral projects, including in the defense industry, but this defense cooperation also creates jobs in science development and civilian production. So I wouldn't be that skeptical. It's terrible war, but in terms of economy, it's helping us, and this also helps us to help Ukraine. Thank you very much. Challenging task to ask a Greek to keep short. 
very challenging task. For me, I believe uh, if we're going to move forward, the most, press, the most pressing thing is to start talking about the future. This is why I chose educated case about the future. So we need to decide where we want to go. I'll borrow experience from uh, the UN. I say, in order to improve a situation, you need to start talking, to start talking between all nations and all stakeholders. Then you come up with a type of structure to support implementation. The way I see it today, we have big ideas, but we are lacking a structure to push towards implementation. Uh, the last item for uh, consideration would be that something is better than nothing. So if we are stuck, let's accept the new situation and work towards how to improve it. And I'll stop there because I can keep talking forever and my apologies for all this. It is part of the culture that Thank I'm you. sure that my Latvian friend has not been exposed to. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, from uh, my opinion, um, the, uh, the, the greatest challenge um, is not only um, um, the, um, uh, the lack of elasticity in financial conditions. Uh, this te from te technical point of view, uh, as I said, we, uh, for our small scale, smaller scale projects, we need more elasticity and, and uh, also more favorable financial conditions um, attached to these um, financial, um, financial instruments should come from, from the three C's initiative. But there is more, 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 uh, a bigger challenge, and this is that we might not be politically on the same page from the, this, for, uh, from the point, perspective of democratic standards. And uh, for a main country which is very deeply committed to uh, uh, democracy, it might be difficult politically to cooperate with someone who is not uh, in more democracy. Uh, well, I mean, we may call it, uh, um, it uh, which is uh, uh, different uh, standard of democracy, put it more, uh, more politely. Um, and this might undermine this, this initiative um, in long term. Uh, but, but there are also economic perspectives, of course. We can uh, become a huge market to each other. Uh, the potential which uh, must still be, um, um, it must be developed, but there is this potential. Thank you very much. Mr. Papin? Recognizing that I'm now officially standing between the us and the conclusion of the panel, I'll be very, very brief. Um, but uh, certainly the interest of powerful international actors in the countries of this region is both the greatest challenge and the greatest opportunity. And I would simply suggest um, that it, it, it feels, and this is not a, not, a, not a comment on the panel at all, it's just, um, in fact, the, 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 the points that have been raised have been extremely illuminating. Um, but I think with each consideration we should evaluate, uh, are we looking at a short-term benefit for the region or countries in the region, or is, are we putting in place something that is likely to benefit for the long term? And the only, the only possibility that I would add to this or throw in for considering that um, is that it's quite possible that the focus of American foreign policy, which has been on this region uh, since 2022, could also change. So I know that's not something that we can all uh, account for and we might have different perspectives on it. The reason that I've been advocating, uh, I tend to favor the economic and infrastructure perspective more than the you know, interim military investment perspective uh, is precisely that it's, it's likelier to be something long term, at least as I view it. But even if we had the discussion in those terms, evaluating things um, with respect to how they're affected by international actors, I think it would be an interesting consideration as well. So thank you very much for all of the illuminating perspectives this afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Gordon Papin, Alter Auster, uh, Dimitrios Dalakis, Jan Martin, uh, Marian, sorry, uh, Philip Ludwin, and Denis Binkis. Thank you very much. <laughs>